Today we're tackling a big question in web design, Flexbox or Grid. If you've ever been confused about which one to use for your layout, you're in the right place. CSS Grid is a two-dimensional layout system that uses rows and columns, making it great for building complex page designs. Flexbox is a one-dimensional layout tool that arranges items in a single row or column, perfect for aligning elements inside a container. Modern websites often need both directions, horizontal and vertical, so knowing which tool to pick really matters. In this video, I'll break down when to use Flexbox, when to use Grid, and show you simple examples to make everything clear. Let's get started. To dive deeper into Grid or Flexbox, make sure to check out our Grid and Flexbox videos. Let's start with a simple example using three cards. Each card has an image, some text, and a button, which makes it a great way to compare how Flexbox and Grid handle layouts. In our Flexbox layout, the parent container uses display, flex with a small gap, which lines the cards up next to each other. But you'll notice the cards don't stay the same size because each one has a different amount of text. In a good design, card size shouldn't change just because the text is longer or shorter. To fix this in Flexbox, we need to style the child elements, the cards, and add Flex1. This makes each card grow evenly and stay the same size. So with Flexbox, we have to adjust both the parent and the children. Now, let's compare this with CSS Grid. We use the same cards, but this time the parent has display Grid. We set the columns like grid template columns, one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, and add a gap. Right away, all the cards become the same width, no matter how much text they contain, and we don't have to touch the child elements at all. That's one of the biggest benefits of grid. The parent controls the layout, and everything inside just follows along. Example 2. Inside each card, the text paragraphs are different lengths, which makes the buttons sit at different heights. This looks messy, and ideally, all buttons should line up at the bottom of the card. With Flexbox, we can fix this by making the paragraph take up the leftover space using Flex Grow 1. That pushes the button down, but it requires extra styling on the child element. With CSS Grid, the solution is much easier. Grid uses rows by default, so if a card has four items, an image, a heading, text, and a button, we can set the rows to auto auto one fraction auto. The text row grows to fill the extra space, keeping the button at the bottom. If the card has three items, we simply use auto one fr auto. In both cases, Grid handles the layout automatically without touching the child elements. Flexbox can solve the problem, but Grid does it with fewer steps and more control. Now, let's look at another example where we design a basic website layout. Since the layout uses both columns and rows, CSS Grid is the best choice. We start by applying display, grid to the container that holds everything. The grid has two columns, one fixed at 200 pixels and the other filling the remaining space. Then we create three rows, one for the header, one for the main content, and one for the footer. The header and footer rows use auto, while the middle row takes up all the extra space. Next, we assign simple grid area names like header, nav, main, and footer to match the elements. Finally, we use grid template areas to place them. The header spans both columns on the first row, the second row puts nav on the left and main on the right, and the third row places nav on the left and footer on the right. With just a few lines of CSS, Grid gives us a clean, organized, and responsive website layout. Next, let's check out the website header. It has two basic parts, the logo and a group of navigation buttons. Example 4. Our goal here is to place the logo on one side of the screen and the navigation buttons on the other. Since both elements are in the same row, this is a one-dimensional layout, which makes Flexbox the perfect choice. With just justify content, space between, we can push the elements to opposite sides in only a couple of lines of code. You might wonder why we don't use Grid. While Grid can do the same thing, it takes more steps, setting display grid, defining two columns, and then adding justify content space between. 
It works, but it's not as quick or clean as Flexbox for this type of layout. To finish the header, we add align items, center so everything sits nicely in the middle. For the navigation buttons, we use Flexbox again, center them, and add a small 10 pixel gap so they're evenly spaced. As you can see, Flexbox makes this header layout simple, fast, and efficient. Example 5. Now let's take a look at the menu section on the left side of the website. Our goal is to stack the menu items in a column with 10 pixel spacing and move the settings item to the bottom. Since this layout goes in only one direction, Flexbox is the right tool. We set display, flex on the nav, switch it to a column with flex direction, column, and add a 10 pixel gap between each item. At first, everything sits in the center, so we target the LI elements and use Flexbox again, adding a line items, center to line up the icons and text, keeping a nice 10 pixel space between them. The last requirement is pushing the settings item to the bottom. Justify content won't work here because it affects every item, not just the last one. Instead, we apply margin top, auto to the settings item, and it moves down on its own. No complicated positioning needed. Through these examples, the goal is to help you understand when it's better to use Flexbox and when Grid is the smarter choice.